Hello, Micro here. Today I'd like to show you how to use Photoshop CS4 and make a watermark and then export that watermark to your Adobe Premiere Pro to add into a video. Now I've seen on YouTube a few videos on how to make watermarks for pictures, but I haven't seen any of those in CS4. So here's just a real quick simple way to make one and then I will show you how to implement it. Now I assume that you already have an idea of what you want to use for your watermark, whether it's the copyright um, logo, if it's just your name, or if you found a, des a design. And also a good place to find designs is if you just Google and hit the image button, and then you can search for whatever you're looking for, a shape or a design of a leaf or a house, or whatever works for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and import this logo that I have, a Fratzog logo. And it's nice because it's a black foreground with a white background, which makes it easy to select the foreground and remove it from the background so that we can utilize it the way that we want to. Now that we've found a picture that we like, we can go over here to the background, right click on it, and choose Duplicate Layer. And over here it just gives us the standard name of background copy. Well, that works perfect. So we want to make sure that the background copy is highlighted and we want to unselect the background with the locked layer because we want to make sure that we can edit this. Now let's go over here to the left hand tools panel and what we're going to need is we're going to need to select the quick selection tool. And go over here, we'll select our black image and of course if you have a very colorful image you're going to have to take a lot more time trying to select this and there are more tutorials on YouTube on how to select if it's more difficult than this one is. So now that this is selected, you see all three black squares are selected, let's come up here and we're going to invert it, meaning that we're no longer going to have the black selected but the white selected. So you go to select and inverse and as you can see now all of the white is selected. The reason we're doing this is we want to keep the back foreground as our main picture and we're going to have to erase the white background because if you don't, when you put this watermark up on a video or even on a picture, it's going to be, it's going to show the white also. So we're going to have to get rid of that. And now back over to the toolbar. Now over here we have this eraser tool. And if you select on it, we can select the background eraser tool, which will just erase the background, but we'll be able to keep the foreground. Just hold down left click and start erasing. Now the problem that we're going to run into here is with the background being white and gray squares, it's really easy to miss a selection. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repaint this background so we can get rid of it easier. So over here we'll grab the paint bucket, we'll come over and we'll pick the color we want. Blue is nice and easy to see. And we're just going to paint the background. And now that it's painted, we can go back over, reselect our background erase tool, and just start erasing. And as you can see, you can even go right over that foreground image. That's because we used the inverse earlier and just selected the background. As you can see, it's pretty easy to miss a spot. Now see if you were doing this with that white background image, you wouldn't be able to tell that you were missing all of these little hidden pieces that are sometimes really difficult to get rid of. But just keep working at it and this process right here might actually take you a minute or two to get rid of it. And of course if your brush is too small you can always come up here get a different brush. I have mine set on hardness so it can get rid of it easier. I find the 65 brush works pretty well. And there we go. Now that we're to this point we can go up here and we're going to create a new preset background. File, new, you can name it or don't name it, it won't really matter. And I've already chosen uh, 7 inches wide by 2 inches tall. 
you can see over here I have inches selected. I do like a higher resolution because we can keep this picture bigger because when we put it on Premiere Pro, we can actually shrink it down very easily and yet still retain a high quality. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And here we go. Here's our new, new image. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our original image that we just worked on. We're going to grab the Move tool. Make sure that we have the background selected. Grab it and just drop and drag. There we go. Now let's center it a little bit. And that looks pretty good there. You really don't have to worry too much about this big white background that we have. Because after we're all said and done, we're actually going to make that opaque so that it doesn't even show up. So what I want to do is I want to put some type in here. So we go over here on the left, hit the type key, and as soon as we start typing it creates a new layer, which is very convenient. Whoops, there we go. And click anywhere on the page because we can always move the type around later. Now, as I can see, I don't like the blue color. I want to go back to the black that I had. So we'll reselect the black. And we want to find the font that we like. I kind of like this Dutch Gothic font that I actually downloaded. And I know I already want the type set at 60. If you're not sure what type, what size type you want, you can always check it. And if you don't like it, just delete it and go back through it again. So I'm going to use my name brand, which is Microware. And then as soon as you come back up and click on this Move tool, it will lock in your new layer. Now with having the Move tool selected, we can just grab these words and move them wherever we want. And if you find that the words aren't going quite where you want them, you can always come up here, grab the magnifying glass, make sure you're on zoom in, and then if you just left click, it'll zoom in. Then you go back up to the move tool, and now you have a little better control, and it's not so jerky, and you can get it exactly where you want it. And then when you're done with it, go back up, hit the zoom tool again, Make sure you hit the minus key so it'll pull back out where you want it. And put the picture back where you had it. And then I always go back and I hit the move tool just so I don't accidentally click on anything else.